Well, Anthony, Paolo, distinguished guests, uh, good morning. Uh, it's indeed, my pleasure of mine to uh, to join you on this uh, mor in this morning on this workshop organized by the Chatham House and the Bohemia. Uh, I think Norman just gave a very uh, uh, concise story about the uh, development and importance of the Roman B uh, internationalization and the implication for Hong Kong. Uh, in fact, I recently took part in a number of uh, road, you know, road shows. Uh, one organized with the uh, Shanghai Municipal Finance uh, Department. Uh, we went actually to the uh, Southeast Asia to talk about B internationalization and the Hong Kong asset management industry and so on and so forth. And then I also recently was in uh, Europe uh, in a few cities. And the excitement about, the interest and excitement about the B products uh, uh, it's clearly very noticeable. And then the, uh, the, the dim sum bonds that, that you know, Hong Kong is issuing uh, have, are seen to be a sort of new development uh, of the uh, capital market of Hong Kong. And a lot of the uh, in, uh, in, international banks and uh, foreign ministries, foreign finance ministries are very interested in, uh, in uh, working with Hong Kong to develop the uh, you know, the trading, clearing, and then the, 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 the platform for B services. So indeed, it's a very exciting opening, you know, not only for, for mainland China, but it's a very interesting new pillar for Hong Kong finance industry. Um, so so I, thought, I thought I would uh, do, you know, uh, spend the, 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 my, my, uh, the talk, my talk here on sort of the, the, the rest of the finance market other than the B and try to really give you a flavor, a story about, you know, how Hong Kong is going to grow and, and what kind of challenges uh, we should be addressing. Um, you've seen earlier from Norman's, Norman Chen's lie about the Chinese growth story. And I think that is the, ma the major story, not only for B, but as you can see the major story for the, the, the rest of the Hong Kong financial market. Uh, in fact, you may even see that with the global financial crisis, the importance of China's growth become even, you know, some, even more appreciated around the world. Not only that China stabilized, you know, in some way the world during the crisis, but the continuous growth of China provided a foundation for the uh, continued recovery uh, in many parts of the world. And in fact, the story after the financial crisis has always been a, you know, change in the, you know, if, or the center of growth from the Western markets to the, to the Eastern markets. And from Hong Kong, we can actually see that. We can already feel that. Uh, you know, the, certainly from, in the Hong Kong's case, after the crisis, we saw that economic growth figures in Hong Kong was very strong. Hong Kong rebounded very quickly uh, from the crisis. The GDP growth for 2010 was 7%, and uh, this year's growth rate looks, you know, more or less the same. And more interest, you know, I guess more interestingly, or more in a way more challenging to us is that the uh, the property prices have been going up. You know, the, the the office rents have been going up. Many of them is fueled by the increase in the activities and the importance of the financial sector in Hong Kong. So you actually see that you know, investment, firm, investment banks and financial firms are expanding their presence in Hong Kong, asset managers relocating here, uh, asset managers from the rest of the world as well as China are relocating to Hong Kong and causing you know, greater demand for offices and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the housing. So, it's, so you see this is the, you know, with the financial crisis in the passing, you actually see the financial sector getting Gaining a, you know, gaining an importance uh, in Hong Kong. Um, of course, there are challenges. You know, uh, I don't want to go into the, all, the, all the great, great de in the great details about challenges we had to do in terms of uh, uh, addressing the, uh, the, 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 uh, the housing price bubbles. Uh, I think last week you saw some, some measures coming out from government on that. Uh, we, we'll keep vigilant about, about this. Uh, but, but going back to the story about the, uh, um, the financial sector, it's very important for us to look at this competitiveness and the, the growth path of the financial sector because not only 
not only you know in the last two years we see that the financial sector actually contributed a lot to Hong Kong's economic activity, but we know the financial sector is is a very strong pillar of Hong Kong's growth. Financial sector contributes about 70 percent, one seven percent of GDP, so has always been a very important industry for Hong Kong. And if you so, if you look at it, the growth of the financial sector. Uh, of course, like the Renminbi story, the most important driver for the, for the growth of our financial sector has always been China. And you know, the, the, the growth of China, actually, the, the bigger pie that, that Norman Chen shows, shows on the slides, that captures the story about why our asset management industry has been growing so big and why our fund management, one of fund raising industry has been going so well. But I want to keep, I want to set, step back a little bit and so sort of like, you know, instead of just talking about the number and what is the significance behind these numbers. Now Hong Kong clearly is a gateway physically. We are here. We are, we are located in the southern tip of mainland China and historically Hong Kong is a place where the western business people come through to go to mainland. So we always describe it as a gateway physically. You know, in, in, uh, in terms of when China was opening up, you know, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Hong Kong business people invest in Hong Kong, bringing the capital and, and, and knowledge as another illustration of gateway. But in the financial sector, Hong Kong is serving, serving a gateway more than just a physical gateway. In the financial sector, Hong Kong is serving as a gateway more as a, as a, as a test bed of new ideas. It's a place where the new ideas about financial market, you know, development, sort of got, got used, you know, in experimentation, in helping the Chinese economy or Chinese enterprises, you know, find their way of growth and find a way of reforming. So that's the importance of Hong Kong, a place where new ideas came about and new ideas got tested. Now, I, am, I can refer back to the, to the beginning of the Hong Kong H share you know, story. You know, the, the first company was, was listed in Hong Kong, that was the Qingdao Brewery. You know, that was the, the first state-owned enterprises from, from, uh, from China that got listed in Hong Kong. So it's not just a company listed in Hong Kong. Why was Hong Kong picked? Why was Hong Kong used as a platform? Certainly, Hong Kong has a lot of money. Hong Kong Chinese investors are eager to invest in a Chinese company. But I think it's an, another important aspect is that China, Hong Kong was already a very developed financial market. And even more important than that is that it was the right time for the Chinese government to, to, to decide that they should try to really use Hong Kong to experiment with fi Western financial market. Now, sometimes it's been uh, it was, it was sometimes described in the, in the popular press uh, and even among the Hong Kong people, uh, you know, thinking that it was a Chinese government, the Chinese national leaders who gave Hong Kong the business. Well, I think it's important to know that, yes, there is a lot of this uh, uh, support that we got from, from, the, from the central government, but it, won't be, it would not be fair to describe the, you know, the opening that way. It's not fair to you know, if we do not recognize the, you know, the, the, uh, the, a lot of hard work you know, by the Hong Kong's uh, financial industry leaders in those days to, to come up with a new idea, to come up with this plan of helping Chinese firms internationalize. It will not be fair to the Chinese national leaders of recognizing the importance of Hong Kong and then using Hong Kong as a way to test some new ideas. So there's a lot of you know, bonus you know, in, in, in opening up that, that, industry, that H share listing industry. And of course, the rest was, was, uh, was a very, you know, dip, dip, you know, with all this uh, uh, support and help, Hong Kong actually financial market uh, did very well on the strength of this uh, uh, H-share listing and then the, and then the uh, uh, you know, the Chinese enterprises continue list in Hong Kong. And with the financial market, with the capital market uh, activity in Hong Kong growing fast, with the, you know, continue, the increasing number of Chinese companies. And then in the, in the early part of the last decade, 
uh, with you know even greater Chinese uh, uh, opening, a lot of the Chinese state-owned banks coming to Hong Kong to raise capital. Hong Kong basically just blossomed. We, know, we, are, we are becoming a major fundraising center for the, the mega IPOs from China. And because of the success of Hong Kong doing this, Hong Kong was able to sort of like, you know, um, leapfrog into a bigger league of the world financial markets. With the, with the mega IPOs in Hong Kong done successfully, showing that Hong Kong was able to attract international liquidity international capital to our market, we actually have a bigger concentration of international fund managers, you know, I banks located in Hong Kong. A typical international, in typical I, mega IPO done in China, done in Hong Kong, let's say for Chinese uh, enterprises, most of these capital raised are not from Hong Kong's peoples alone. Okay, most of the capital raised actually are from around the world. So Hong Kong was able to be doing intermediation between you know, the Chinese companies who need the money and then the larger international capital market who's happy to work through Hong Kong to invest those enterprises. So I think that is, a, is a, the growth story of Hong Kong international capital market. You know, try, using the, 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 the Chinese IPO as a way to leapfrog you know, into this world league of, uh, for fundraising. Uh, and the last couple of years, of course, you, you see that Hong Kong is trying to leverage on this uh, capital funds funding ability to fundraise for non-Chinese firms. And I think there's, with, with uh, various degree of successes, uh, we have uh, a number of non-Chinese companies successfully listed in Hong Kong. Uh, and this last week, actually, we had a lot of excitement about you know, some Italian company uh, who is, uh, who is uh, dazzling uh, the Hong Kong uh, investors, uh, in, in very much the same way, they also the Chinese women, you know, in, in their stores. So, so that's a new story. Some, and some story, that something we have never seen before. But then we are now seeing this, you know, continuous growth in our, in our, uh, you know, in our listing uh, market. Uh, it's also important to know that, other than the IPO listing, which I mentioned, Hong Kong has always been the test bed of new ideas. I could just mention the, QD, the QDII and QFII schemes. The QD and QF, these are a schemes in which uh, there is some, you know, that, that there is some facilitation of the opening between the, the capital market in, China, in the mainland China and Hong Kong and the rest of the world. So with QD and QFI, there is some way, or you can try to make, make some opening in the market. And of course, the QD and QFI was very successful. Uh, if the Chinese capital market reform continues, we should expect to see more of that, and Hong Kong should be able to, to, uh, to benefit from that. Uh, Norman mentioned the uh, renminbi QFI. That's, 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 that's an extension of the idea. If renminbi, you know, offshore business growing in Hong Kong, then the renminbi QFI becomes a you know, good scheme in order to bring the offshore Hong Kong, offshore RMB from Hong Kong back into the mainland China capital market. So that's kind of the, the, the extension of the QFI QD scheme that we can see work very well uh, in, in here. Um, now, I talk about the, the fundraising, and I didn't really talk about the asset management so much. Uh, uh, but asset management has been, uh, has been going, has been basically growing alongside with the, uh, with the growth in our uh, capital funding, capital raising uh, business. The idea is very simple. The idea is very simple. In Hong Kong, in fund management industry, of course, Hong Kong government, we have done a lot in terms of make, it, make ourselves attractive. Uh, we have introduced a number of uh, you know, uh, measures, including abolition of the estate duty, uh, as well as uh, uh, a tax regime that is uh, beneficial to the offshore uh, fund management industry. We've done some of that. But the most, most important reason for the growth in our fund management industry are not because of these measures alone. The most important reason for the growth of the fund management industry is simply that you have a China story here. You have basically a concentration of people who understand China 
And then, if you're managing a portfolio、uh, for international clients, you know, out of some place, and these portfolios include investment in China, Hong Kong becomes the most likely place to to put the people in. Okay, that's that's a simple story. It's a really it's a traditional strength of Hong Kong: low tax, you know, free capital flows, and then this access to the Chinese market, the access to Chinese expertise, and that's really. The,、uh, the driving force be, be, you know, behind our fund management industry, and again, these days not only the Western managers are coming to Hong Kong. The new trend, the new trend is that the Chinese fund managers are also coming to Hong Kong. The Chinese international, the Chinese financial institutions are coming to Hong Kong because they are going international. Norman showed you the slide where the where Hong Kong is the major hub. Of Chinese ODI, okay, you know, fund capital going overseas. So, you know, that's the story. That's the numbers tell you that Hong Kong is a place where a lot of Chinese banks are setting up in order to manage the international capital activities. So, so we we have seen the first wave in a way of the asset managers coming from outside of you know from 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 international market to Hong Kong. We should be enjoying, I think, in the future, a next wave, which is the Chinese fund managers expanding their presence in Hong Kong with QD, with QD and other way.、Um, they actually enlarge the fund management business here. Again, the key point here is not so much about, you know, tax system, tax regime, so on. Although Hong Kong has a very good, favorable tax regime, but we don't attract asset management by tax measures. Okay, we have level playing field. But more importantly, we attract manage, asset management business to, into, into Hong Kong through our knowledge, through the human capital in Hong Kong. I think that is really the game that we should be continue to play. And now, where are where are we going from here? What are the challenges? How do we how do we、um, address the competition?、Um, I think the story that we have we have seen, you know, I believe the story that I've seen. Continues with its、uh, significance and relevance.、Uh, Hong Kong still is and will be for some time to come a testbed of new ideas of financial reforms and innovations for China. Now, going back to, to, to the early remark I made, you know, some some people said you know Hong Kong was successful because China gave Hong Kong the business. I don't think that is necessarily true. Okay, Hong Kong had to work very hard to to get to get a business and so has, has to work very hard to make ourselves relevant. But we have to make sure that, in in doing all this, we continue on a fundamental strength. China's story is the biggest story in in our in our in our generation. So if Hong Kong can continually successfully intermediate between the Chinese financial needs and then the and then and then the rest of the world, I think Hong Kong is sitting on a very good platform, you know, to develop our financial market. So that's that that story I think continues. So when we look at the financial market development, I believe the fundraising, the the, the, the listing, uh, uh, the listing market that we have,、uh, will continue to grow. Now we should never be complacent. You know, when when we look at when we look at the financial the, the market of our、uh, listing,、uh, in a way we have been very successful because during the past when we actually did a lot of Chinese listing, we worked very well together with the Chinese regulators. So a lot of these quality issues, a lot of these transparency issues, could be addressed within this regulation. And also, Hong Kong has a very good understanding about the Chinese firms. I think I believe our professionals in Hong Kong have very good inside knowledge about the, you know Chinese firms. So that gives Hong Kong、uh, listing certain quality benchmark. But I believe we should also continue. To safeguard that quality benchmark and uphold that quality, ben quality benchmark, because after all, at the end of the day, how good your market is is very much, you know, determined by the quality. So I think in, in that sense, we should try to make sure that we uphold the quality. It doesn't, however, mean that we will keep on saying no to innovations. You know, keeping quality doesn't mean no to innovations. We should always, you know, try to be a fac market facilitator. In that regard, I, I, I remember the Bahunia did a very good study、uh, a few years back, 
on the on the uh, expansion on the uh, uh, of the of a Hong Kong listing platform and other things. So a lot of those messages are still very valid, and in fact, the, uh, the regulators and government have been have been working together uh, to try to really make our platform more accessible, more facilitating. So it's very important for us to, to maintain the, the balance between upholding quality and market facilitating. But on, all, but in, on, on, on innovation, Hong Kong should not try to do everything. You know, I don't think Hong Kong can do everything. We can be a, we can be a market for everybody. Uh, we have to really focusing on our fundamental strength. Now, sometimes when I look at regional competition, you know, where does Hong Kong stand? Uh, we got a bigger Hong, we got a big, big, Hong, big China story, you know, on you know, on which we can build. It doesn't, it doesn't mean Hong Kong, you know, um, certainly it doesn't mean Hong Kong should only rely on China story. On the other hand, we should not look for any every new market, trying to really you know fill the fill all the holes. For example, I don't think Hong Kong has advantage over Singapore in terms of uh, you know having working with the Indonesian or, 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 or you know some of the markets that is more the Indonesia, Singapore's hinterland. Clearly, Hong Kong and Shanghai, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff that Shanghai can be doing. Hong Kong would not be so good in doing. So we should really have some confidence, believing in Hong Kong's strength and build on that. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I look at the international competition, uh, sometimes people ask me where, where, how, how I see Hong Kong uh, you know, in the future. And I, do we see, do, is Hong Kong like a New York or London or, or whatever? It's very hard to really come down to one sort of one analogy, what's Hong Kong going to be? Uh, Hong Kong, in a way, is a domestic most international financial center for China. On the other hand, we're also a capital market for the rest of the world. So, it's, so how, where do you put Hong Kong in there? Uh, Hong Kong may be like London in some way because of asset management industry, because of a listing business. We clearly are not Geneva. You know, if Geneva was specializing in private banks and so on, uh, and it doesn't look like we're in Frankfurt, you know, where Frankfurt you know, does some you know, OTC or, or, or derivatives listed platform. So in a way, it's very, it's very difficult to actually try to really be one for all, be a market for everybody. So I think we should resist a temptation in our market development trying to be one for everybody. We should try to really look at where our strength is, where can we keep going, guard against complacency, uphold the quality, and make the market facilitating and make, a mark, make our market, you know, serving the, the needs of our customers. So, so I think I, I, would, uh, I would stop here. Uh, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, I believe there's a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, potential interesting uh, uh, topics uh, for us to discuss in terms of the building the Hong Kong's uh, financial market from here. And, uh, and I want to thank again the Bohemian Foundation and then the Chaham House for your very good work. And, uh, I, I wish you all success in concluding your, your project. Thank you.